Okay, one example that I like to use is uh, the last startup that, that I was uh, involved in as a, as a co-founder. Um, we were actually deploying software 225 times a day. Um, and really that number is kind of a peak that happened once or twice. Um, but the way that we did this um, was really a few things that, that Microsoft surfaced uh, into Azure. And we really wanted to, to take advantage of the, the being able to deploy very rapidly. Um, so the pieces that we used to achieve that, um, first off is we were using um, Git um, and specifically GitHub um, to do the source code repository. Um, this, this project evolved over several months, um, so I just really want to go through kind of how we evolved it. Um, but the first thing we did is, you know, in the, in the about, you know, we had two developers from day one um, working on it. So we uh, were using Git and, you know, day one, I'm sure we were just checking into to the master branch. Um, and on master branch, um, that would go to an Azure um, web app. Um, and so there's a hook. There's a hook that can happen from, from really any uh, public facing Git repository or GitHub um, that will actually tell Azure um, that a change has taken place in Git um, and it will deploy the web app. Now the really nice thing that happens um, on Azure is not only does it get that, that change that happened in the branch that it's looking at, in this case master, is it will actually pull your NuGets down and it'll, it'll additionally compile your web app. So this is super quickly. Uh, this will happen super quickly, sorry. And at this, this workflow, in my mind, I mean, I think it's lower than this in a lot of cases. I would just take the idea that this is happening um, in about the 45 second time frame. So let's just, I mean, break it down a little bit. So now you have two developers um, who are working side by side, writing code, checking into Git. Um, so now you're checking in a couple times an hour or, you know, every 10 minutes or whatever. Now you can kind of see how we were getting uh, up to the 225 um, deployments per day. So this would be really like 225 Git commits per day. Um, they got pushed to GitHub. Um, so that's it's still a lot, but you can see how, how we were able to achieve that. Now, this is the lightest way um, of, you know, deploying to Azure, um, as well as, you know, we, when we started the project, we didn't know how viable it was going to be, so we weren't really big on testing and stuff, right? So what we did later, and again, I'm going to just boil this down to a fairly simple um, process, um, but what we were able to do is basically because the, the web application was looking at master, later we were able to add a dev branch. And so then this would keep us padded um, from master um, and it would slow down our deployments in a lot, of, a lot of cases, but it was slowness that we wanted. Um, so then when we were ready, that's when we would merge to master and that would kick off the web deploy. And so that gave us the padding that we wanted. Now, around this time, we were also starting to write like unit tests. And you know, day one, we just ran them locally and then we would commit to master and then that would be fine. Um, but later on, what we did is we used Jenkins for this. I'm sure there's a ton of ways to do it, um, but we would commit to dev and then this would become our, our continuous integration environment. Um, so from day one, you'd commit to dev. Um, this uh, Jenkins in our case would be watching the Git branch it would compile, it would run our test cases, et cetera, et cetera. Now, at a certain point, we decided that, you know, that was great. What it would do is it would hand off the package and do the continuous deployment. And the nice thing about this for us was it wouldn't actually do the deployment like straight to the web app. Um, all it would do would be to um, commit it to master which again would, would kick off this uh, workflow that we had already running and working. So we just turned that commit to master into an automated step. And again, we were just using the pipeline that, that naturally exists on Azure Web Apps. And so, you know, those really early weeks, um, we were able to push, you know, in the 200 uh, builds per day to Azure. And over time, we slowed that down and made it I don't know. I mean, we're definitely, you know, 
10 to 20 builds to production per day, um, always. Um, I mean, you have a couple devs, and we had you know up to six devs working on stuff um, at various points. Um, so yeah, like like you know every hour something new would be going to production um, in, a, in a regular workday for sure, and and more because it's a startup. And we don't we don't work nine to five on those. But <laughs> so this is a really uh, kick-ass way you know to really do continuous deployment. Um, if you want 200 builds per day, do it. Um, but obviously, you know you could do less. Uh, you could do more, maybe. I don't know. But I'd love to hear about that. Um, but this workflow really does not bottleneck you, right? And I think that's the big thing that was really the eye-opener to us, is workflows that we had done in the past, whatever they were, um, would be bottlenecks that would not allow us to ship like 200 times a day. Um, so I just really wanted to show how we did this using Azure um, Web Apps, um, and then we backed it with Git. You can back it with other source code, um, repositories that have hooks that can do like this push um, and it's just it's mind-blowing uh, the how fast you can have deployments happening um, and how cheaply too because there's really at this level there's like no infrastructure that you need to run you can have free git repositories um, you can have most basic web apps um, to get up and running and, and just go hack away man okay I hope you enjoyed this I hope it was slightly insightful and uh, if you ever want to talk to me about how we did this or you know any recommendations that I have, feel free to hit me on Twitter at JeffKingABC. Okay, bye.